Limo 2 movie, too much champagne scene. Take 7. Action. Oh, Benny Technica. You're my most favorite limo driver I've ever had. What do you say we elope and ride off into the sunset in this sweet limo? Just you and me. Gary Powers, stop being silly and get in the car. You've had too much champagne from a long night of awards after, 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 after parties. I'm taking you home now. Cut. That's a wrap. Great scene, guys. Good job, Penny and Gary. All right, now let's go get some pizza. All right, all right, all right. Hello, my fellow mushy blobs of earth dirt. My name is Hans, father of plants, always hoarding all the teal bricks and builder of Legos, and mildly silly. Today I want to show you guys my Palace Cinema limousine, teal brick style. So chillax, put on your glamorous socks, and let me show you what I did to this classic movie star limo. And first things first, the origin story. All right, and as you may have noticed, this limousine originates from the 10232 Palace Cinema Creator Expert Modular Building, which is one of my favorite modular buildings. Now, one of the reasons why I'm doing this video on the Palace Cinema limousine is because I'm actually gonna be doing another video on the Palace Cinema itself and some of the major changes and upgrades that I've done to it to make it suitable for my upcoming Lego City Paradisa City, which I'm really excited to show you guys that. And so this limousine is a prequel to that video. Now I really like the Palace Cinema. It's one of my favorite of the modular buildings and it definitely got its inspiration from the famous Chinese man theater down in Los Angeles or Hollywood which is where all the celebrity stars in the sidewalk uh, are. It is a classic historical building and part of the Los Angeles history and I think the Lego designers Jordan Astrid did a really great job in capturing that look and feel of a historical Chinese theater in Hollywood. However the little car that came with the the Palace Cinema, in my opinion, is definitely lacking. It's really too goofy looking and there's a lot about it that doesn't quite meet my default standards. I didn't like its proportions. These classic cars are usually much bigger cars and yet it has little tiny wheels. It has these big awkward wheel arches and the body line of the car is so low and then the difference between the hood the top of the hood to the body line of the car is to me was just completely awkward so when i got the palace cinema remogging the limo was one of the first things i went about doing now although my opinions of it may be scathing i am glad that they made it because it's a great addition to the modular palace cinema building it is a great starting point for capturing the essence of a classic automobile uh, that would be used by celebrities movie stars so i'm glad it was there and i'm glad it gave me a chance to re-envision it in my my own way. So without further ado, let me show you the limo. And of course this being a palace cinema and having the fun theme of uh, movies, I decided to give my two minifigures that are in the limo their own names. And of course I've named her Penny Technica, P-I-N-N-Y. And I've named him Geary Powers. Now that's Geary as in a gear from uh, Technic Gear. And of course obviously it's carrying on the Technic theme, completely unrelated to the limo or the set itself. Okay so if this is the first time you're seen one of my videos. Let me give you a super brief update. I'm planning on building a Lego city. I've named it Paradisa City. It is a tropical city and it is also a futuristic city in the year 2060 and it has some unique transportation systems about it. Uh, its roads are, are have different purposes. It's a walkable city and there is an underground network for autonomous vehicles only. So all vehicles that are driving down there are usually like police cars or delivery trucks or shipping trucks, garbage trucks, food trucks of that sort. And there will also be be a limited number of cars that are allowed to drive in the autonomous tunnel network and Paradisa City gives out special permits uh, for cars and this would be one of them. As being a city of the future this car has been converted to an autonomous vehicle and into an electric car and as a matter of fact I have set number 60258 the tuning workshop and the treads tuning shop. I'm actually going to remock that into a tuning shop that specializes in converting old classic cars into electric cars. A lot of aftermarket electric conversion shops do exist and they're doing some amazing things like converting old Porsches and old VW Beetles and old VW buses and, and you name it all kinds of cars are being converted into electric cars and they're taking Tesla battery packs or, or Nissan Leaf battery packs and swapping them into a lot of old cars. So look forward to that and if you want to know more about my futuristic Paradisa City another good video to go watch is my video on the road plates. So go ahead and check that out. I do go into depth and detail into three three types of roadways and, and transportation types and there will there will be a part two to that video coming later on. So in Paradisa City in the autonomous roadways all vehicles 
can only operate under autonomous mode. And this car has been converted to an autonomous mode. And what I've done for that is I am putting this little robotic sensor, and this basically represents the LiDAR and radar sensor. And I'm putting this on all my cars, but not all of them, because uh, it would kind of ruin the look and aesthetics of the car. So in this particular case, I'll just pretend that the LiDAR and radar sensors are pretty much hidden behind the grill, as would be normally in real life. And another thing that I'm doing is putting in computer screens on all my cars, large, big touch screens, which is something you're gonna see uh, 40 years in the future. All right, so let me talk about my default car mods. These are default mods that I have a standard for. And so any Lego vehicle that comes right out of the box or doesn't quite meet my standards, uh, I go ahead and, and remock it or do the conversions, upgrades to them. And one of those is the wheels. So I have, I've designated certain wheel sizes for certain car types. And this is my default car wheel for all car sizes and also the wheel arch. Now this is my truck or industrial shipping vehicle wheel arch. However, I didn't want to use the other arch, which goes all the way down to the bottom of the car because that looks a little too modern. And this type of arch I felt was more representative of a classic car. So I think that would be a good time to, to go ahead and let you guys know what types of wheels go with what types of cars when I do car mocks and remocks. So the first wheel size is the little wheels. And I've reserved this for very, very small cars, the subcompact car class. And these are the cars that are going to be four studs wide. I also use these for carts and go-karts and stuff like that. Uh, so there's that size wheel. The, my normal car wheel is gonna be this size wheel. Here's another example of this type of wheel. So this will be for all cars, and that includes sports cars. And even the Speed Champion cars, what I've been doing is, if I can, I'll remock the Speed Champion cars to have this size wheel as well. Now, I don't like this type of wheel because this reminds me of off-road Baja style. It's a very balloon tire. It's got a very small rim and a huge sidewall for the tire, and uh, it just doesn't look good for vehicles in cities. Uh, so I don't really, other than that, I rarely use this tire. Any vehicles that Lego gives me with this wheel, I immediately get rid of it. There is this tire and I pretty much only use this for cars um, that have all-wheel drive capability. So like the Audi All-Road or a Subaru Crosstrek uh, type vehicles. Uh, this is what I use this tire for. I don't use it on large industrial trucks or diesel trucks or big rigs, whatever you want to call them. For my 4x4s, I only use this tire. Now, I don't like this tire. It's too low profile and it's way too wide, but it is the the right portional size for these 4x4 trucks. And the tires that come with these 4x4 trucks are just way too big. Um, they're almost as tall as a minifigure. And in real life, tires that tall, you know, tires that are almost the, you know, go up to your shoulders. I mean, those are those are tires that are on big giant tractors, like excavator tractors. So I always downsize those wheels. And this is, this is what I'm talking about, these wheels. And if you compare the size, you can see that the tire goes right up to his shoulder. So on rare occasion, I do keep these wheels, but 90% of the time I get rid of them and I swap in the other wheels, even though I don't like the other wheels, it's the right size. And yes, I do agree that these wheels make these vehicles look completely awesome and it's great for kids. However, proportionally, it just bugs me. And the Speed Champion wheels, I put those on uh, SUV type vehicles as well as all my industrial vehicles. So large shipping vehicles, buses, etc. And this to me is the right size wheel for these types of large, very large vehicles. Now, this limousine has been extensively modified and I don't think much of the original uh, components, um, especially in the chassis area, still exist from the original vehicle. I've completely overhauled it from the ground up. And speaking of the bottom chassis, structural rigidity on all my LEGO cars is very important to me. And it's something that I've noticed that LEGO has done very, very well. And it has to do with the fact that, you know, they want children to be able to play with these cars without them kind of crumbling or falling apart. Uh, so I pay a lot of attention to the structural rigidity across the, the entire wheelbase. A lot of LEGO builders uh, make cars and they have very fragile connections. And for good reason, they're really trying to get the unique shapes and, and characteristics of the vehicle that they want. But I, I try to stay away from very weak connections. One vulnerable spot that always appears on LEGO cars that you build is a is a separation line here and here between this wheel, the mid-span, and this wheel. And to show you what I'm talking about, this is the perfect example. It's often very easy to end up in a situation where, where you have a car and if you don't have a bridge that goes all the way across to connect these three sections, you get a very weak car. Now, one way to get 
around that is to use the inverted bricks right there and then you can get that connection right over there and this six stud wide double inverted brick is another good example of how to do that and then it also gives you room a cutout to add say like doors and stuff however this only works for vehicles that are four studs wide at the base so one thing i would love is for lego to give us inverted brick with the cutout that is three studs long it's two studs down here on the bottom and then one stud up here on the top and that would help us make that connection where the wheel arch is and still be able to have a place to put the doors or arm pockets for the minifigure arms and then that would allow us to have vehicles of any uh, wheelbase length and still be able to bridge from this section into the wheel arch and add structural rigidity as well as have be able to have features in here so if you imagine a one by three here and then a one by three over here uh, you can use that for any vehicle length now if I had that piece that I was just now talking about I'd be able to get a full-size door in here and a full-size door in here unfortunately that piece doesn't exist and because of it I had to use regular inverted one by two uh, slope bricks and therefore I wasn't able to get a full-size door in here and in fact I don't even have a door here which I would like to do eventually but I've got this door now one thing I did do with this particular door is make it a suicide door very much like the 1965 Lincoln Continental which is a completely beautiful car absolutely amazing and you can see a version of it in the Matrix movie the very first one so I think having this suicide style door on a classic car like this just really suits the theme another thing too is that with this connection here on the door it adds even more structural rigidity and of course this slope piece actually helps make that connection from here over to the door another thing I'll mention is that I've increased the wheelbase from six studs long to seven studs long I think it suits the proportionality of, of the car itself and one reason I did that was because of one of my default mods is to try to add the little Lego minifigure seats in my vehicles whenever possible it's not always possible but I try to I try to add them anyways uh, say like sports cars you know where the roof line is so low I, I can't have proper Lego minifigure seats now another one of my favorite features is all the gold accents and that was really driven by uh, finding this in my parts bin and then also wanting to do the hood ornament I wanted to create some sort of hood ornament I love this hood ornament uh, it's just a little pistol piece in the gold color and then later on when Lego came out with the gold wheels as soon as I got these uh, last summer I put them on on this car in my third remock revision of, of this vehicle and the windshield I went ahead and added this piece I really like this particular windshield for classic automobiles and one place that you'll see this particular windshield is in set number 76077 Lola agent Coulson's red classic Corvette uh, uses this windshield piece which reminds me I did a remock of that Corvette and I need to make a video on that as well because it's pretty cool looking if I may say so myself one of my favorite updates to this car is the nose or the hood of this car I really like having added this quarter circle two by two bow tile here a lot of classic cars from like the 50s and 60s were very large organic voluminous curvaceous shapes and so by adding this it helps add to that curvaceous shape to it another thing that I did for the nose was I completely overhauled this and I got rid of the little cheese wedge slopes that were right here on the very front and I replaced it with a couple of the quarter circle one by one tiles and then also the Technic plate the two by three Technic plate with the hole in the center are on one end that helped give it a nice rounded look to it not not an angular look and then for this I really wanted to get rid of that stud that was right there on the original car and it was using a one by four roof tile slope and so I swapped in a one by four brick with a bow slope to it I'm not completely sold on these little gold accents but I just threw those in there for fun they're just gold accents I also threw in some gold accents right there just as kind of a uh, as a stylized emblem that you see on a lot of cars another one of my favorite features is the folded down convertible top that I used instead of the tan color that is in the original car I went with a burnt or dark orange color and for the rear of the car I got rid of that uh, symmetrical arch that was above the wheel and to follow the body line I'm using a one by three bow slope right there and then for this part of the rear portion of the trunk I left that pretty much the same I really like how that looks how this kind of swoops in there and this has the its own profile there and of course I left the back of the car pretty much the same now this car looks perfect for a celebrity arriving at a movie premiere event at the palace cinema I would totally cruise around in this car so if you haven't subscribed already go ahead and hit the subscribe button and stay tuned because very soon I'm gonna be releasing a video on all the changes that I made to the palace cinema itself and if you want to learn more about my upcoming Paradisa City check out some of my other videos I've got the skyscraper hospital as well as a garbage truck and the road plates and especially in the road plates video where I introduce the futuristic transportation concepts in that particular video so please subscribe and if you like this
this video, go ahead and give it a like and leave me some comments. Let me know what you guys think of the limo. Love to hear what your guys' thoughts are. And as always, I'll check you guys later.